In this tutorial, I'm going to discuss or try to discuss the normalized tables where you look up your z-scores. At the back of statistics books, there's usually a table like these, and it's where you look up your z-scores. While the values are the same, the way you look up items in the table are different. You should try to find 1.5 on your table in the back of your stats book, and you'll find three values, one of three values possibly. I'm going to explain in detail what these mean in just a moment. The z-score is there, and if you read down, this is the z-score, obviously. Now try to find 1.96 on your table, which is right there on mine. This table has three values. Again, I'm going to discuss those three in just a moment. Your table may look something like this, where you have z right there but you only have two digits reading down, so you have 1.9 instead of 1.96. The six comes from reading the top column labels, so it's a combination of that row and that column. In this case, this table only has one value, one of the three I discussed earlier, and it's the intersection of that row and that column. It would be 1.96. Those normalized tables usually have one, two, or three values in them. And if you know one of the values, you can get the rest of the values. In other words, they're all interrelated, and that's what I'm going to discuss now. So if your z-score is 1.96, it will be right there where I've just drew it in. The body, or the blue area of the bell curve, is the probability that an observation is less than, has a z-score less than 1.96. So in this case, the value is 0 0.9750, or 97.5%. I have other videos that discuss z-scores and the meaning of those, so I don't want to get into that here. Now the tail, or the green area, is the probability that an observation has a z-score greater than 1.96. And in this case, it's 0 0.0250, or 2.5%. Now, let me draw another bell curve here, and this time I'm going to discuss or show you the area between the mean and z, which is the brown area. And this is the probability an observation is between the mean and 1.96, standard deviations away from the mean. And the value would be 0.4750 or 47.5%. All three of these scores or all three of these values or areas are interrelated, and I'm going to discuss that now. These three areas represent different probabilities. When the body and tail are added together, or the blue and green areas are added together, the value is 1, which is the red area. And this is 100% of everything under the bell curve. When the tail and mean are added together, let me move the green area so you can see that better right there. It's the red area there, and that red area equals 0 0.50 or 50% of the area under the bell curve, half the area under the bell curve. Finally, if I take the body 0 0.9750 and subtract 0 0.4750, and I'll move the brown area over, what's left is 0 0.500 or 50% it should be that red area right there would be left over. So all three of these values, the body, tail, and mean, and z, all three of these areas represent probabilities. I'm going to do two more examples, a plus 1, z-score plus 1, and also z-score negative 1. So again, if my z-score is 1, the body is the area below 1, and the tail is the area above 1. You should try to look up the value 1 in your z-score table at the back of your stats book and kind of follow along and try to find one of these values in the table. So again, if I add the body and tail together, that adds up to 1 or 100%, everything under the bell curve, the blue and green area added together. When I subtract the area mean and z from the body, I get a value of 0 0.500 or 50%, the brown from the blue. 
and if like last time when I add the tail plus the area from the mean and the z it equals 0 0.50 which is half the area under the curve I would encourage you to try to find these values in the back of your stats book now if you haven't done that already. Now I'm going to use negative 1, the z-value of negative 1, and that's the where negative 1 would be right there. The probability a observation has a z-score of less than negative 1 is 0.1587. The probability that it has a z-score greater than negative 1 is 0.8413 and the probability it has a z-score between the mean and negative 1 is 0.3413. Like before, these are areas or probabilities, the values in the table. The body plus the tail, again, is going to equal to 1. 100% of the values under the curve. The body plus the mean and z value, or the blue plus the brown, is equal to 0.50, or 50% of the area under the curve. Hopefully you can visualize that without me moving the brown area. I'm going to put negative 1 and 1 both on the screen so you can see both here and compare them. The bottom row represents that bell curve, or z-score of 1. The top row represents the bell curve on the left with a z-score of negative 1. Notice a z-score of negative 1 and 1 are exactly the same. It's because the bell curve is symmetrical. Often tables don't include negative numbers, only positive numbers. So the negative and positive both mean the same thing, have the same value, I should say. And look at the table again, you'll see that the areas of the blue and the green are symmetrical or just opposite of each other. Again, this can be a very confusing concept in statistics. You may watch the video a couple times and I would encourage you to look up these values in the back of your book and see if you can't follow along.